please remember if you're going to work on gas boilers you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so my name's alan hart and today i'm working in barnsley with love your plumber john from love your plumber and he's installing a new ideal logic combi boiler um so what we're gonna do we're gonna go and have a look go and have a look what he's doing got my new van there look my new uh, service and repair van my new tesla van um yeah so what we're gonna do we're gonna have a um have a look at what john's doing and just see um another opinion really so my channel's not just about me it's not about what my opinion is it's about what everybody's opinion is so if if, if there's any other installers anywhere and you want to um show people what you install and why you install it then please get in touch but yeah let's go we'll go in we'll see john and we'll have a look at the spoiler that's installing So John's isolated the electrics on this to make it safe, done all his electrical checks, he's tested the gas and he's turned the gas off so it's all safe for John to work on here. Just got the delivery. Delivery's here now. And this is an ideal, ideal logic boiler. So what's the reasoning for taking this boiler out, John? <coughs> It got diagnosed the other day that the main heat exchange is busted, uh, which is causing losing pressure. Um, as you can see, it's caused damage to the boiler and um, it's all corroding. Um, it's just not financially. It's better to replace it, basically. Oh, you stuck that tape with your huh? So you've just got a wooden board here, ply board. Just to make our wall nice and tight, just to do a proper job. So we've just got John. John's just put the template on. Ideal Logic's really good. It comes with a template, and then you can mark it all for your bracket. What have you done there, then, John, with that flue? So on an heat-only boiler, um, it comes with a blanking plate on the flue. So right. what I do is I take it off and I have all I always have one or two in my van spare. So when I'm doing a vertical flow or any other flow, flow going through a wall, I put it in the boiler and it just saves any muck and debris from entering the boiler instead of putting a towel over it. That's absolutely brilliant. If we have a look at condensate pipe as well here, we can see it comes out in overflow pipe. And then it just goes down to a drain there. What John's going to do on this one is going to use the new condensate, condensate pro, just to do a quality, quality job and lag all that. I've seen quite a lot of John's work, and he always does a first class installation. Actually, went on a charity install with him. Yeah, we did some work for charity and we did an install together. Oh, well, I went and just helped out. But yeah, he's put all clips on here. He's going to pipe all this up shortly. One thing that's really important on any boiler installation is that you clean the system out and also afterwards you protect it with an inhibitor. And that could be any of the leading brands, in my opinion. So, Fernox, Aide. Or Sentinel. So what have you got there, John? I've got a swaging tool. So what does that do? It opens the pipe up, so using less fittings. Personally, I just think it looks neater. Um, Th this is where I we'll differ. It. I love it. This is where we'll differ. because it takes I, some time I, and it's <laughs> harder, but I, I generally love it. And it gets your forearm pumping. This, this is the great thing about going and seeing other people working because we used to use swaging tools many, many years ago. We used to do it with a hammer and 30 years ago when I was an apprentice, I remember hitting myself, hitting myself on fingers and stuff like that and that's not, I don't think it's something I'd go back to, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's good to see other people and what other people do. So he's connected that on now. 
got his Amiga filter on there. He's got his compression fitting, on blow off. And also he's done the, actually looks quite nice that, to be honest. Please comment below and let me know what you think. Is it worth it? Do you like swedging? Does it look better? If you are a gas engineer or a plumber and you do install gas boilers, not trying to teach you uh, how to suck eggs here, but always have a look in the installation and servicing instructions because we see so many jobs that are not installed correctly. So I'm gonna just, I'll have a little brief look in here. Um, see John's doing some nice work there. The first thing I wanted to point out with these instructions and something I see that people do wrong quite a lot. If we go to page 24, it just shows you in there. And I'm, as I say, I'm not trying to teach people to suck eggs here, but just to read the instructions. But it shows you how to correctly seal the flue. And the black ring would go around the outside of it and seal all that. So outside you would only see the black part, so you'd see the black part and then the black rubber bit would go over the black part. So that's fully sealed and then you won't have the issues of it leaking in. And the next thing I wanted to look at is the condensate drain installation. So if we have a look in the instructions again here, it shows you for different, different scenarios what we need to do. And what it's showing now, it's showing bigger pipe going through the wall and it's also showing that it's insulated as well and then with that one there we can see it goes down and again this one it's insulated and that's showing insulation actually through the wall now Look at his pipe work under there, his soldering. It looks really, really neat. And this is something that I used to do actually, put a drain off on the floor. And if you see that on a boiler, there's a good indication that your installer's done a really good job because what they'll do is use that to do a mains flush once they've finished. So obviously they'll do all their normal flushing but before they go, they'll also flush it again with that. If we have a look on this boiler, underneath John's put on a shock arrestor and that's to protect the boiler. If we have a look at page 16 in the installation instructions, we can see there's a little section up here and it says important provision must be made to incorporate the expansion of the domestic hot water within the appliance. So you just need to check that section and see if your install needs a mini expansion vessel. So they don't always need the mini shock arrestor, but I would say it's good practice to install it. And the other thing to, to notice on this, it's done in copper. And if you have a look at page 13 in the installation instructions, so if we look at page 13, we can just see there that you need to have a minimum of one meter of copper pipe connected to the boiler for the flow and the return. And it must all be done in accordance with the British standards. So John's got a little tip on how to bend condensate. And I've never done this before, so every day is a school day. So basically it's just the same as a pipe, uh, it's a 22 mm pipe, and all you do is you bend it to where you want it to go. Once you feel that tension, you just pull it a bit more, a bit like that. There you go, job done. That's great as that. And if you can see underneath boiler there, it's nice and neat with condensate. So I've actually learned some of today. Just gonna fill the system up now. So if we open this valve here, Turn that towards us and then just open this one. So 
the pressure has been topped up now to one bar, just over one bar. John's just downstairs, he's just putting a test on, on gas. And we're gonna fire this boiler up and then we'll have a look at this front display as well on this boiler. But as we can see, John's done a cracking job here. So what are you doing now then, John? So on here then, right, what you can do, you can access the, um, the menu um, and you can put your insulation number in. Uh, so when it flashes up in 12 months time, it shows that the um, customer uh, that you've got a service due. You can actually change the service time. If you want to change it, uh, do it every six or 12 months, up to you. Uh, you can do it month to month if you want to. It's got fault history, fault help. This is a good um, option though, it's a vent system. So once you've, you can obviously hear the boiler gurgling now because it's on. Uh, but what you can do is actually turn it off. If you want to look that way, Alan. So the boiler's off at the minute, but the pump's running and everything. So if you just press vent system. So a vent system, press enter. And when it's for five minutes, the pump will come on and off. And that'll just get up, try and get all the air out of the automatic air vent in the boiler. So I do this on every installation. Have a look at this front display. The boiler's on now, and central heating's calling for heat. The display on this is is very very nice. It's got hot water preheat, so that's turned off. Then you can turn it on by pressing that button. Turn it back off again. Then you've got your menu. Click on your menu, and then you can scroll down from this. So as you can see on that front display, it's a really nice display. It's also got the service mode in there, so it's easy for the installer to use. What we'll do now, we'll bob outside and we'll see John. John's doing the condensate outside. So John's installing the condensate now and he's using Condensate Pro, which is this lagging. And this is UV and water resistant. Most of the boiler installation instructions ask for waterproof lagging and some manufacturers say class O lagging, um, water resistant. And as far as I'm aware, most class O lagging also needs treatment and you need to paint it. Um, I've seen some of the instructions that say it needs painting twice. So what you need to do if you use class O lagging, you need to paint it when you've installed it and then you need to go back within a week and you need to do it again. So that's just something to be aware of and something for you to check for yourself just to make sure that you're doing it, obviously, so you're doing it correctly. If we have a look on page 28 in the installation instructions, section F, and it says class O lagging, but it also says waterproof. So it has, you have to make sure that it's waterproof. If not, in the winter, it might freeze up. John's done a really nice job with this Ideologic. Um, it's all been flushed. If you want to see any videos on flushing, I've done plenty of videos on flushing. Um, so just search for power flushing or mains flushing or whatever. Um, it's put X800 in this system, cleaned it out with X800, and then it's got a nibber to uh, X100 inhibitor added then afterwards. Uh, what we'll do now, just have one final check outside, um, have a look at this condensate, and that's about it really. John's just finishing off the lagging, and as we've said before, this is waterproof lagging, and it's UV protected. I'd like to thank John from Love Your Plumber for inviting me on this job today. It's been really, really interesting. It was good to see the swaging tool and just to see how different people do different jobs. And as I say, John, John does a first class job. The most important thing, in my opinion, on any boiler installation is, is the flushing. So if you flush the system, if you install this, if you install any boiler, any boiler well, there's a very good chance it's going to last for a long time. It's certainly going to um, certainly going to last longer than a boiler that's not installed correctly. So yeah, well thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please ask them. 
in comments below and please check out john's website um loveyourplumber.co.uk i think it is but i'll add a link below um yeah and you can check that out but as i say if you could leave some comments below and if if you're a plumber a gas engineer and you install a different brand of boiler and, and you want to do a video with me get in touch i'll come and see you and yeah we'll have a day and have a good day and we'll get some video thanks very much